start. Let's see. Okay. Hello, guys. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, guys. How are you doing today? Fine, teacher. You are very busy, teacher. Excellent. Okay, fantastic, guys. I'm really happy to know that you're doing great today. That's excellent. So thank you. Thank you one more time for being here. You can see. Thank you so much, guys. All right, so tell me, how is your day going today? What did you do today? Anything interesting that you would like to share? Muy interesante, guys, que les gustaría compartir con el grupo. ¿Qué han hecho el día de ahora? A ver. ¿Cómo estamos con esos ánimos? <ríe> Pena empezando. Trabajar. Work, work, work. Work, ok. Work, work. <ríe> Puro Acabo trabajo. Acabo de venir a mi casa. Acabo de venir casi a tiempo. Vaya. <ríe> Puro trabajo, ¿verdad? Ok. Así nos toca, ¿verdad? Hay que echarle ganas, guys. Como dicen, ¿verdad? Hay que echarle ganas. Así es. Así es. <ríe> ¿Verdad? No sé si ha estado lloviendo por ahí donde ustedes viven, porque por acá, pues, estuvo lloviendo ahora. Yes. Yes, ok. So it's been raining a lot. It's been raining. They say that September is the month where it rains the most. That's what it's, they say. Okay, guys, so uh, remember that this week we are not going to have the class on Thursday. And then the class is going to be on Friday, right? Last week, by accident, they made a mistake and they said that the class was going to be last Friday. But at the end, the class is going to be this coming Friday, the 16th, right? So remember that Thursday is going to be, because it's a holiday, we are not going to come to class that day, okay? So that is really important, keep that in mind. Uh, also, the people from uh, the staff, they said that uh, we need to finish with all of the activities by Friday morning, okay? So we are going to try to complete and review all of the information by tomorrow, okay? We're going to see all of that information and I will also help you guys so we can complete the, the exam so you can be ready for Friday because that's really important, okay? Okay, guys. Entonces, eh, como les mencionaba, pues para el viernes por la mañana antes de la clase, se supone que ustedes ya tienen que haber terminado eh, todas las actividades, ¿verdad? Así que vamos a intentar cubrir toda la información hasta el día de mañana. Y voy a intentar también ayudarles para que podamos realizar las actividades, ¿verdad? Ustedes saben de que yo acá estoy para ayudarles en lo que ustedes necesiten. Así que vamos a hacer eso. Ok, so... So, for today, guys, we are going to see some new information. We are going to also eh, review a little bit about the information that we discussed yesterday. As you remember, yesterday we talked about... Uh, so, to, and also neither and either, right? That's the information that we checked yesterday. So for today, we're going to continue. And now uh, we're going to begin with uh, some information that will help you so you can pronounce the sentences accurately, okay? That's uh, something really important. Entonces, eh, vamos a empezar el día de ahora, guys. Vamos a aprender... Eh, ¿Cómo tenemos que pronunciar nosotros cuando utilizamos eh, las palabras tales como eh, to, so, either, 
y neither, ¿ok? Entonces, eh, creo que ya estamos la mayoría por acá, así que les voy a compartir la pantalla, ¿verdad? Permítanme solamente unos instantes, por favor. Vamos a ver. Ok, guys. There we go. Ok, guys. So, well, eh, welcome one more time. Thank you for, be, for being here, guys. Thank you so much. All right. So, today, eh, the topic is going to be this. We are going to talk about eh, to, so, either, and neither. And we're going to talk about the stress on these type of sentences. And we're also going to talk about eh, how to order a meal. Uh, which is on the information that is on the on the website okay so that's going to be like the topic for today okay so all right so the objectives uh, the objective is going to be the following okay uh, it is for us to practice pronunciation noticing stress in responses and we will also learn to sound natural when responding with so, to, neither, and either. Okay, that's just uh, one of the examples. Uh, we actually have more uh, objectives for today, but this is just one example for you guys. Okay, so we're going to uh, begin. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, stress. So what is stress? Uh, probably this is something that you guys listened uh, to before. Probably you already started the subject before. So we have a definition of stress. Okay, so stress is the way that a word or syllable is pronounced with greater force than other words in the same sentence or other syllables in the same word, okay? Entonces, eh, probablemente ustedes guys ya han visto este tema, ¿verdad? Acerca del estrés. El estrés dentro de una si dentro de una palabra o dentro de una oración es algo similar a lo que nosotros utilizamos en el idioma español con el acento, ¿verdad? Básicamente es la parte de la oración o la parte de una sílaba dentro de una palabra la cual se pronuncia con mayor fuerza, ¿verdad? Entonces, acá tenemos unos ejemplos acerca de las oraciones que hemos estado viendo que estudiamos, por ejemplo, el día de ayer. Teníamos eh, que, para decir yo también, teníamos dos opciones, ¿verdad? Podíamos decir me too, or you can also say so do I. You can also say I am too. Eso cuando se trata del pronombre I, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿qué pasa? Eh, para que nosotros lo pronunciemos, digamos, de la forma más adecuada, eh, en estos casos, para este tipo de eh, oraciones, el estrés va al final de la oración, ¿ok? Si ustedes recuerdan el estrés, básicamente lo que hacíamos es que incrementábamos un poco el tono de la voz al final de la oración, ¿ok? So, en este caso sería como me too, me too, so do I. Ustedes ven, el tono va subiendo un poco, ¿verdad? Entonces, acá la mayor fuerza en la pronunciación está al final de la oración. Okay, me too. So do I. So do I. Ok, luego tenemos otros ejemplos acá. Eh, tenemos eh, example number one. It says, I don't either. Ok, I don't either. Or, I am not either. And we have the last example that says, neither do I. Ok, we have uh, highlighted in red the part of the sentence that has the stress. Ok. So that is uh, something that you guys need to take into account. Uh, you just need to practice. This is uh, something that you need to practice. And with time, it will become something natural for all of you, okay? So I'm going to show you the video with the, uh, with the explanation so you can see how it works, okay? So we are going to listen to the video uh, together. So please bear with me. I'm going to do it right now, guys. Okay, here we go. Sí, dígame, Francisco. Buenas noches, teacher. Pregunta, nature, ¿qué significa? ¿Cuál es la, la traducción? Sí, eh, thank you, Francisco. Okay, so this is something that we discussed yesterday. And we said that neither, basically, it means like 
tampoco. Okay, that would be like the translation to Spanish. So if you say eh, me neither, then you, you are saying eh, yo tampoco. Or you can say neither do I, okay. yo tampoco, ¿verdad? Okay, Eso. thanks, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, guys, so we're going to listen to the video. Here, let me see. Okay, here we go. This is the one. Please pay attention. Hi, nice to see you again. In this class, we will practice pronunciation, noticing and stressing responses. We will learn to sound natural when responding with so, to, neither, and either. Notice how the last word of each response is stressed. I do too. I am too. I can too. So do I. So am I. So can I. I don't either. I'm not either. I can't either. Neither do I. Neither am I. Neither can I. Okay, so let's either. just... Uh, okay, so I'm just going to show you guys the examples that we have on the video. And as you can see, uh, in this case, when you say, I do too, I am too, I can't do. Basically, the stress is at the end of the sentence. Okay. And the same thing happens with so and neither. Okay. The only one that it's a little different is the one with I don't either. Okay. That's the only that's the only one that is a little bit different to the rest. Then the other ones, basically, when you say it, you are going to have the stress at the end of the sentence. Okay. So that is just something that I wanted to share with you guys. We're going to practice this so we can so we can learn how to do this, okay? So, okay, guys, eh, no sé si tienen alguna pregunta respecto a esto. Creo que este es un tema bastante sencillo, ¿verdad? El estrés simplemente es colocar una entonación un poco más fuerte en la oración, ¿verdad? Y en la mayoría de los casos acá, pues, es al final con la excepción de either, ¿verdad? Eh, yes, Francisco. What's the difference uh, in, in either or uh, neither? What is the difference? Uh, yes, so we were saying yesterday, Francisco, that uh, you use either when you have this uh, negative form, okay? You have, I am not either, okay? And then you have the uh, neither, you say, neither do I, okay? You see, you don't have a negative form on the sentence. So that is the difference. But at the at the end, they both mean the same thing, okay? They both mean the same thing at the end. Okay, um, entonces, either is positive, um, neither is negative. Yes, yes, in some way, uh, yes. Ah, okay, okay. Ambos, ambos, yes. Significan, ambos significan lo mismo, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, okay. acá usted está diciendo, yo tampoco. Y aquí también, yo tampoco. Ambos significan lo mismo. Solamente que acá, acá estamos utilizando eh, una forma negativa, ¿verdad? Not. Y acá, si usted se fija, pues acá no está esa parte negativa, ¿verdad? Solo es, uh, neither do I, ¿verdad? No hay ninguna negación acá. Pero también está diciendo lo mismo. Yo tampoco. Ambas dicen lo mismo. Ah, ok, ok. Sí, sí, ¿Ah? Yo no pude conectarme porque no me sentía bien de salud. Pero ah, ok. Pues hay, que, hay, que, hay que, ¿cómo se dice? Aprovechar. Gracias. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Francisco. I'm, ho I'm happy that you're here uh, and happy that you're feeling better. That's really important. So, yes, thanks. Okay, so guys, uh, if we don't have any questions about that, now we are going to discuss a, a vocabulary, some vocabulary that you are going to use about food, okay? So on the screen, I am going to show you some of the most common food vocabulary, okay? So we have different categories. We have fruit, we have vegetables, we have meat, seafood, uh, grains, dairy products, oils, and sweets, okay? So these are like the most common categories, okay? So when it comes to fruit, 
We have examples such as apples, we have grapes, bananas, and oranges. Okay, Excuse aquí tenemos. Teacher. Yes. Mm -hmm. En la pantalla no le veo, o sea, de lo oh. que está hablando. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, thank you. Thank you for letting me know, Iris. Thank you. I apologize. I forgot. You're right. Okay, so then here we go. This is what I was saying. Okay, so we have the food vocabulary. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so we have different categories. We have fruit, we have vegetables, we have meat, seafood, grains, dairy products, oils, and sweets, okay? So when it comes to fruits, we have examples such as apples, bananas, grapes, and oranges, okay? These are some of the examples for that. Yes, Francisco? Uh, no sé si hay mucho pedir, pero ¿cree usted que eso no podría mandar una captura al WhatsApp? Si claro. Si puede, si no, no, gracias. Sí, claro, eso les puedo mandar. Déjenme un momento acá si les puedo compartir. Vamos a ver. Me just a second. Here, I'm going to share it with you guys. Let me see. Vamos a ver. Sorry about that. Okay. Bueno, entonces lo voy a compartir, guys, para que ustedes lo puedan ver por ahí. Gracias, teacher. You're welcome. Here we go. Can somebody share the screen, actually? Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Can somebody share the screen? Mayra. Okay. Thank you, Mayra. There we go. I appreciate that. Okay, guys. So, uh, like, like I was saying, we have different categories, right? Uh, this is just something that is going to help you, you know, in case that you want to uh, talk about food, in case you want to order food, this is something that it can help you guys. So then when it comes to vegetables, we have some examples such as carrots, zanahorias, we have broccoli, uh, peppers, some chiles, verdad? onions, cebollas. Dentro de las carnes tenemos chicken, Tenemos a lamb. Lamb es cordero, ¿ok? Es cordero. Nosotros no lo comemos, pero en otros países es un poco más común, ¿verdad? Entonces, también tenemos a sausage, salchichas, y tenemos a carne de res, que sería beef, ¿verdad? Beef. Entonces, eso sería dentro de las carnes, ¿verdad? Luego tenemos la comida de mar. Así se le llama, seafood, ¿verdad? O mariscos. Entonces tenemos eh, fish, eh, pescado, shrimp, camarones, squid, que es calamar. No, bueno, incluso acá, ¿verdad? Hay lugares donde venden calamar. No sé si ustedes lo han probado, que lo venden así hasta en cócteles y todo eso, ¿verdad? Son bastante buenos. <ríe> ok, so we have eh, squid, we have clams, que serían, eh, bueno, almejas. Y también tenemos crab, que es eh, cangrejo, ¿verdad? Ok, eso sería dentro de seafood. Then we have eh, grains, and we have these uh, examples. We have pasta, ok, pasta, like. Then we have eh, noodles, que son fideos, fideos, ¿verdad? Tenemos rice, arroz, y tenemos bread, que sería el pan, ok? Entonces, pasta noodles, rice, and bread. That will be in the grains category, okay? Then we have the next category that will be dairy products, okay? In dairy products, we have butter, que es mantequilla, milk, como todos la conocemos, ¿verdad? La leche. Then we have cheese and yogurt, okay? Yogurt. Esto, bueno, el yogurt, Se recomienda bastante, guys, en ese tipo de dietas, por ejemplo, cuando ustedes están en recuperación, digamos, de una cirugía o algo así, muchas veces nos recomiendan una dieta líquida, ¿verdad? Entonces, el yogur es una buena recomendación por la cantidad de proteínas que tiene, ¿verdad? Ok, so then, that's just an example that I wanted to, to give you, guys. So then, uh, we have oils, we have different kind of oils, we have corn oil, Sería aceite de maíz, 
tenemos olive oil, aceite de oliva y coconut oil, aceite de, de coco, ¿verdad? Okay, then we have the last example here, the last category, that will be sweets o dulces, ¿verdad? Eh, dulces, tenemos eh, chocolate, that will be, I'm sorry, uh, we have candy, que es un caramelo, cake, pastel, pie, que es un, bueno, eh, un pie, ¿verdad? Como nosotros lo conocemos también, y cookies, que son las galletas, ¿verdad? All right, guys, so this is the vocabulary that we have for uh, food. This is just uh, some of the examples, okay? This is just some of the most common uh, food, but there are a lot of food, okay? So I just wanted to share with you just some of the examples because this is going to help us so we can uh, learn, so we can have the vocabulary, so we can ask for food, so we can order a meal, which is one of the objectives for today. Okay, so do you have any questions on this? Are we clear with all the vocabulary? Teacher, I have a question. Diga. Yeah. Um, no sé cómo sería en inglés, pero eh, eh, alguna página, aplicación, algo que usted recomiende para eh, vocabulario. Buena pregunta. Yo soy, yo, yo soy un ejemplo que mi vocabulario es muy, pero muy bajo. No sé si hay, habrá algunas páginas o algo así, como por ejemplo la imagen que nos dé un poquito más de vocabulario. Ahí sí. va a disculpar la interrupción. No, it's okay. It's okay, Francisco. Well, actually, that is an excellent question. And when it comes to that, y, you know, what I do, what I, what I used to do in the past is that, you know, you can you can search in books uh, you can also listen to videos about a specific topic in this case you can listen to uh, videos about the food for example that is going to help you entonces eh, tienen diferentes opciones en mi caso yo lo que hago es que por ejemplo eh, cuando no sé mucho vocabulario de algo pues hago un poco de investigación po puedo ver un video acerca de, de por ejemplo cocina en este caso Ahí podemos ver, este, digamos, eh, la comida más eh, común. O en YouTube, ustedes pueden buscar también, eh, digamos, eh, vocabulario acerca de comida. Entonces, ahí les van a explicar. Ustedes van a ver imágenes. Y creo que es una forma bastante buena porque es un poco más eh, interactiva sé, ejemplo, que solamente estar leyendo. Que trabajan, Entonces, eso les puede dar también. Hay unos que, que conozco aquí que no tienen internet cuando salen. Pero bueno, muchísimas gracias, profe. You're welcome. You're welcome, Francisco. Okay, so then eh, we are going to, we're going to listen to a video, guys. Uh, that is in the website here, okay? I'm going to share the screen again and we are going to listen to the video. So please pay attention here. Vamos a ver. Okay, so vamos a hacer lo siguiente, guys. Vamos a escuchar el video y luego de eso eh, vamos a aclarar las dudas que tengamos y luego de eso pues quiero que participemos, ¿verdad? Así que vamos a escuchar el video y a continuación vamos a formar como parejas para que podamos practicar la conversación que está en el video, ¿de acuerdo? Ok, so here we go. Ok. There we go. And well, as always, try to practice the conversation with a friend. Listen and practice. May I take your order? Yes, I'd like... Hello everyone, I want you to pay attention to the following conversation. We will now listen to the model verbs would and will. As always, try to practice the conversation with a friend. Listen and practice. May I take your order? Yes, I'd like the lamb kebabs. All right. And would you like a salad? Yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. Okay, guys. So we're going to listen to the video one more time, okay? Okay, please bear with me just for a second, guys. Tengo que cambiarme porque esta babosa mucho fallo. Ok, 
En ese momento el profe sintió el verdadero terror. Ok, there we go. Thank you, guys. I'm so sorry about that. There we go. I'm going to share the screen. Uh, I'm going to share the video one more time. Now Teacher. listen to the model verbs would and will. As always, try to practice the conversation with a friend. Listen and practice. May I take your order? Yes, I'd like the lamb kebabs. All right. And would you like a salad? Yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. Ok, guys. Entonces, eh, bueno, se lo voy a colocar acá que a veces la calidad del video no es buena, ¿verdad? Ok. So, we have the conversation here and it says, may I take your order? And then it says, yes, I'd like the lamb kebabs. All right. And would you like a salad? Yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Ok. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes. I'd like a large iced tea, please. Okay, so, okay, vamos a ver acá entonces lo que dice. Eh, primero, si ustedes se fijan, eh, aquí tenemos algunas expresiones que nosotros vamos a estar estudiando que nos sirven para poder ordenar comida. ¿Cómo lo hacemos? Okay. Eh, tenemos ciertas expresiones que nosotros utilizamos. Se los voy a explicar y luego de esto vamos a practicar, ¿de acuerdo? Okay, so, please, uh, give me just a second, guys. Okay. All right, so we have these, uh, these sentences that can help us so we can order a meal, okay? So, we can say, I think I'll start with, and then we say the food that we want to order. We can say, I think I'll start with the potato soup. I think I'll start with the with the chicken, a roast chicken, for example. It's just an example, guys. Okay, you can also say, I'd like the chicken soup. I'd like the salad, okay? I'll have the pasta. Or you can also say, I'll have tomato soup. Okay, entonces son diferentes expresiones que nosotros podemos utilizar. Okay, ¿de dónde viene esto? ¿Qué significa esta contracción que tenemos acá? Si ustedes se fijan, tenemos I, el de apóstrofe, y luego la D, ¿verdad? O tenemos también acá I, apóstrofe, y una doble L. Entonces, esto es, es una contracción que equivale a decir, en este, en este caso, por ejemplo, I would like the salad, por ejemplo. Entonces, me gustaría la ensalada. Esa es una forma en la que podemos ordenar una comida. Me gustaría ordenar esto. Me gustaría, y ustedes dicen, cualquier tipo de comida que ustedes gusten, ¿verdad? También tenemos la otra opción, que sería, I will, I will have the pasta. ¿Ok? I will have the pasta. ¿Ok, guys? So, those are, Some of the expressions that you can use so you can order a meal. Okay? So we have a would, I will. Y estas son sus formas eh, contraídas. Por lo general se utiliza esto. Okay? Y la pronunciación, por ejemplo, en este caso, usted tiene que decir I. O sea, tiene que haber como un sonido de la letra D al final. I like. En este caso, I'll have. Okay? I'll. La letra L va al final. Okay? I'll have the pasta. I'll have the tomato soup. Well, if you want to say it in this way, you need to pronounce it like this. Okay? okay, guys. So, eso era algo que les quería explicar. Ya vamos a ver un poco más en detalle eh, qué es lo que, por qué razón se utiliza de esta forma. Okay? Entonces, eh, vamos a seguir por acá. Les voy a compartir otra vez la imagen de la conversación. Ok, so it says, yes, I'd like the lamb kebabs. Ok, and then it says, and would you like a salad? Y le gustaría una ensalada. Y dice, yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Ok, sí, quiero 
la ensalada verde eh, mezclada, digamos. Okay. And then he says, what kind of dressing would you like? ¿Qué tipo de... Eh, ¿Alguien sabe qué significa la palabra dressing? Vamos a ver, alguien que sepa. What is a dressing, guys? Aderezo. 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 Yes, that is correct. Thank you so much, guys. Excellent. Aderezo. Dressing. Ok, y luego, ¿qué significa vinaigrette? ¿Qué significa esto? Vinagre. Vinagreta. Vinagreta, correcto, vinagreta. Very good, very good, guys. Thank you. Ok. All right, so we're going to continue. Let me... Let me just go back here. Let's see. Ok. All right, so les voy a explicar esta parte, guys, y después vamos a practicar, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, vamos a explicar el uso de would and will for requests, ¿ok? So, would is most used when we want to make a request in a polite manner. Usually, when we talk to someone we are not familiar with, ¿ok? Entonces, tenemos eh, el verbo eh, auxiliar, en este caso would, que... Por lo general, nosotros lo utilizamos para hacer una petición de una forma formal, ¿verdad? Normalmente lo utilizamos cuando no estamos familiarizados con esta persona. ¿Y cómo lo utilizamos? Ok, acá tenemos la estructura. Dice, we can use both, what, would, plus the subject, plus a complement, plus the question mark. And you can also use just would, plus a complement, to ask for a request, or to make a request, ¿ok? We have two examples here, guys. Okay? We have example number one. It says, what would you like for dessert? Okay, what would you like for dessert? ¿Qué le gustaría para el postre? Y luego tenemos otro ejemplo, simplemente utilizando just would plus the subject and plus the complement. Okay, we can say, would you like something to drink? ¿Te gustaría... ¿Le gustaría algo de beber? Ok, entonces tenemos estas dos formas que nos ayudan a nosotros a preguntar acerca de lo que a alguien le gustaría ordenar o lo que le gustaría comer en este caso. Ok, so you can say, what would you like for dessert? And you can also say, eh, would you like dessert? Ambas son válidas, ¿verdad? Y como dije anteriormente, estas son expresiones que utilizamos para eh, hacerlo de una forma más educada, ¿verdad? Más formal. Ok. So, do you have any questions on these guys? Any questions at all? No, teacher, thank you. No questions. Ok, thank you, Ana. Thank you. Francisco, please go ahead. Ok, um, decía usted que eh, utilizándolos en el WhatsApp y todo eso, siempre significaría lo mismo, ¿correcto? Pero, Ambos. Uh -huh. Ok, perdón. Eh, sí. um, también hay alguna forma, eh, que he visto que muchos utilizan el inicio, el final, en medio. También este va eh, con esta dinámica o siempre va al inicio o después del W question. Uh -huh. Ok. Thank you, Francisco. Yes, so I'm going to show you guys the structure and we have uh, these two structures that we are going to be using. So, okay, so you can say it in both, uh, using each one of these uh, two options that we have on the screen. You can say a WH word plus would plus the subject plus like plus the complement. Okay, that will be uh, the option number one. So let me give you an example here. You can say, what would you like to eat, for example? Okay, so say, Ben, primero tenemos la palabra de pregunta, WH, luego tenemos would, luego es el sujeto, en este caso, you, luego like, y por último, un complemento. Puede ser cualquier complemento que queramos, ¿verdad? Eh, también tenemos entonces la otra opción que sería would plus the subject. In this case, would you 
plus like and plus the compliment. So you can say, would you like um, dessert? Le gustaría eh, postre? Le gustaría el postre? Okay, that will be the option number two. So, and this is the structure that we need to use, guys. You can also say, would you like something to drink? To drink? Would you like, um, you know, it can be different things, right? Okay, simplemente siempre va um, al inicio o después de lo que the world. Is the that world. is, that oh, is correct. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You can Can't say just, you can say just would at the beginning, or you can say would after the WH word. Those are the two oh, options okay, that okay. you have. Oh, okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, guys. Entonces, vamos a hacer eh, lo siguiente. Okay, esto es lo que les estaba explicando hace un momento. Tenemos estas dos opciones. Tenemos la opción de hacer la contracción I'll, that, that will be equal to I will. And you also have the other contraction, which is I, okay? I would, okay? Tenemos esas dos formas. Si ustedes se fijan, por lo general, siempre se va a utilizar la forma así contraída, ¿verdad? Es lo más común cuando estamos hablando. Así que tenemos que aprender a manejar esta parte. Ok, entonces lo que vamos a hacer es que vamos a practicar la conversación, ¿ok? Vamos a hacerlo en parejas. Quiero que practiquemos, que todos podamos, eh, que podamos practicar, que eso es muy importante para mí. Así que vamos a hacerlo de forma voluntaria. Les voy a compartir la presentación. Eh, perdón, les voy a compartir la conversación aquí en la pantalla. Ok, so... Eh, Blue cheese, please. Ok, guys, so we're going to participate and one of you is going to be the waiter and the other one will be the customer. So I can see that we have Carlos and we have Nadia. Uh, so Carlos, you can be uh, the waiter and then Nadia is going to be the customer. So you may go ahead, guys. Okay. Um, may I take your order? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, like the lamb caves. Okay. All right. And I, would you like a salad? Yes, I would. I'll make a salad. Okay. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I like a large iced tea, please. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. You did a great job. Thank you. Okay, just a couple of things, guys. Okay, so here it says, yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay, I'll have a mixed green salad. And then at the end, it also says, yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. A large iced tea, please. Okay, it's a little difficult to pronounce. But we need to say it slowly so we can pronounce the words accurately, okay? That's the most important thing. So yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. But you can say here, yes, I'll okay. have a mixed green salad. Yes. In the second line, how is the pronunciation después the lamb? Kebabs. Este es un tipo de comida, guys. Es un tipo, no sé si ustedes ya lo han visto. Se lo voy a compartir por WhatsApp. Les son a... brochetas o pincho, como le llaman. Correcto, sí. Son eh, de estos tipo, eh, tipo wraps. No sé si ustedes han visto los wraps. Eh, que traen como carne, traen así. Se los voy a mostrar. Kebabs. Pero que Babs no es el nombre que le ponen los eh, musulmanes o algo así. Si no me lo recuerdo, comida árabe. No, no. Sí, es un, tipo, es un tipo de comida como, ah, como árabe. Del, del oeste, digamos así. Sí, pero es como... Teacher, 
Eh, si no más recuerdo que Babs es un tipo de pan y ese pan va relleno con carne de cordero, por eso es que le dice que Babs es eh, como, correcto, correcto, correcto. como un tipo de pan, así como, como quien dijera pita, pero lleva otro procedimiento más, es más aguadito creo yo. Ok, thank you Ana. Yes, sí, por eso okay. les decía que era de ese lugar, por eso decía. <risa> Sí, eh, se ven muy ricos, la verdad. Yo nunca los he probado, pero se ven muy buenos, la verdad. Porque a mí me gusta bastante la carne, así que, bueno, se ven muy buenos. Pero sí, entonces, eso sería, ¿ves? Como dijo Ana, es como un tipo de pan que lleva un relleno por dentro, ¿verdad? Entonces, son kebabs. Ok, very good. So then, eh, other than that, I think that everything was great. We did a great job, guys, so thank you. So we have eh, Jenny and Ana. So Jenny will be the waiter and Anna it will be the customer. So you may go ahead. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I take your order. Yes, I like the lamb kebabs. All right. And would you like a salad? Uh, yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. And blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Um, yes, I like the large iced tea, please. Fantastic. Thank you so much, girls. Thank you. That was perfect. Okay. Eh, muy bien. Muchas gracias de verdad, uh, Jenny y Ana. Eh, Jenny y Ana, sí. Eh, muchas gracias. Excelente trabajo. Very good. So let's keep Thanks. on. Let's keep up. Okay, so now we have uh, Jacqueline and Francisco. So Jacqueline will be the customer and Francisco will be the waiter. So you can go ahead, guys. Okay. Mike, I take your order. Yes, I like the lamb kebab. All right, I will. Do you like the salad? Yes, I have a miss green salad. Okay. Okay, what kind of your drink do you like? We have blue cheese and um, vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like uh, anything to drink? Yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Very good, very good job. Okay, so Francisco, uh, just a couple of things, okay? Uh, at the beginning, uh, you need to say, may I, may I take your order? May I take your order? I know it's different. ¿Cómo se me? <ríe> Creo que... No dije, me voy like a order. Vaya, es que si usted lo escucha, está como agregando ahí, ¿verdad? Es ah, may okay, I. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eso I'm sorry. May I. Repita otra vez. May I. May I. May I take your order. May I take your order. Ahí está. Es que yo tengo la mala maña que lo digo rápido. Siempre es sí. la mala maña. Ya, pero Tra... siempre me regaña el profesor. Sí, trate... I'm sorry. Try to do, slow down a little bit, okay? Just okay, slow okay, down. Yeah, sorry. May I take your order? May okay. I take your order? Repítalo varias veces hasta que le salga bien, okay? And then, uh, let's see. Okay, and then, all right. Would you like a salad? Would you like a salad? Okay? But then, very good. We need just to work on that. Okay. Francisco, but thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you. So then we have, uh, we have Maria. We also have Luis. Please go ahead, guys. So Maria, Maria will be the, the waiter and Luis will be the customer, okay? Okay. May I take your order? Yes, I like the lamb kebabs. I'm right. And would you like a salad? Yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay. What kind of Anything would you like? Continue. We have we have blue cheese and vinegar. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I I like large iced tea, please. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Very very good. That was fantastic. Okay, uh, just uh, here we need to say what kind. Okay, what kind of dressing? Would you like? Okay. Eh, sería así. Esa es la pronunciación. Kind. What kind? What kind of dressing okay, would you like? Sure. Thank you. But thank you. Other than that, that was perfect. Thank you. So then we have a we have two more participants. We have Maria 
and Maritza. Oh, okay, sorry, Maritza. Okay. Okay, we have Maritza and somebody else. Let's see. Maybe Christian, Elian, Mayra, maybe. Me. Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead. So Maritza will be the, the waiter and you will be the customer, okay? So you may go ahead, guys. Okay. May I take your order? Okay. Sí, mucho. Sí, sí, Marisa, sí. No sé si alguien más, eh, ¿quién más iba a participar aparte de Marisa? A ver. Y hey, teacher. Mayra. Yes. Okay, please, please go ahead, Mayra. So let's yes. start over, okay? So please, Maritza, please start over. Then Mayra okay. is going to answer. Okay. Yes, I'd like. Oh. May I take your order? Yes, I like the lamb kebab. All right. And would you like a salad? Yes. I have, perdón, I, I have a mixed green salad. Okay, what kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I'd like a large iced tea, please. Very good. Thank you so much, girls. Thank you. Well done. Ok, guys, entonces, eh, solamente para hacer un pequeño resumen, ¿verdad? Entonces, cuando vamos a preguntar, eh, cuando vamos, en este caso más bien, eh, perdón, cuando queremos decir qué tipo de comida nos gustaría ordenar, tenemos estas expresiones, ¿verdad? Tenemos I'd like, tenemos I'll have, en, eh, well, you can say eh, I'd like. Ok, it's the same. So, You can just say, I'd like, and then you can say the food that you would like. Like, I'd like the lamb kebabs. I'd like the tomato soup. I'd like the, uh, I'd like the roast chicken, for example. Those will be some of the options that you have, okay? You just need to start like, I'd like, or I'll have. And then after that, you need to say the kind of food that you want, okay? Just to summarize, just to summarize a little bit what we discussed, okay? So, and then it, let's say if you want to ask what kind of food somebody wants to order, then you can say uh, what kind of, what kind of food, what kind of dressing would you like, okay? We are making a polite request, okay? So, ese es el uso de wood, como lo mencioné anteriormente, wood es para hacer una solicitud para pedir eh, información de forma muy eh, educada, ¿verdad? Ok, no sé si tenemos alguna pregunta con esto, guys, o estamos claros. A ver, eh, Maritza. No. Please. And would you like anything to drink? Oh, okay. Yes, I'd like a large ice. Ok, no problem. Thank you, Maritza. Ok, so we're going to move on to the next part, guys. I'm going to show you this video that basically talks about the information that we've been saying just now, okay? So please pay attention. Quest in English. It is a more polite... Just a second, guys. Let me open this somewhere else. Nice to have you back in... Nice to have you back in class. Please take notes on wood and will. Just a second, yeah. Nice to have you back in class. Please take notes on wood and will. Try to understand how they are being used. After the explanation, we have some questions for you. Please answer them on a... After the explanation, we have some questions for you.
on wood and wheel. Try to understand how they are being used. After the explanation, we have some questions for you. Please answer them on our discussion box. Modal verbs would and will for requests. What would you like? I'd like the lamb kebabs. I'll have a small salad. What kind of dressing would you like? I'd like blue cheese, please. I'll have vinaigrette. What would you like to drink? I'd like a nice tea. I'll have coffee. Would you like anything else? Yes, please. I'd like some water. No, thank you. That'll be all. Contractions. I'll equals I will. I'd equals I would. We presented would and will in a conversation and then on a previous chart. But now let's work on them. Using would to make requests. Would is used when we make requests in English. It is a more polite way to make your requests to someone, especially when you're not familiar with. We can use would directly at the beginning of the question. Would plus subject plus like plus infinitive verb plus complement plus question mark. Example, would you like to drink tea? Or we can use it with a WH question word. WH question word plus would plus subject plus like plus infinitive verb plus complement plus question mark. Example, what would you like to eat for dessert? Also, in this opportunity, we're using would to answer questions. What would you like to drink? I would like a soft drink. Or, I'd like a soft drink. Did you notice the position of would in the answer? That's right, it goes exactly after the subject. How to answer using would? Subject plus would plus like plus complement. Now let's pretend we're in a restaurant and you are the waiter. This is my response. I want you to think on the question. I like apple pie. I like Okay, guys, so here uh, we have this uh, little exercise that we need to answer, okay? So it says, uh, she's saying that we are going to suppose that she is in the restaurant, okay? And this is the answer that she's giving. So what would be the question in this case? What would be the question for this? We have the answer here. You need to say the question. So what would it be? What would you like uh, for dessert? Excellent. Thank you so much, Nadia. That's correct. That will be the question in this case. What would you like for dessert? And then the answer is going to be, I'd like apple pie. Okay, me gustaría el pie de manzana. ¿Verdad? Excelente. Muy bien. Okay, luego tenemos la otra que dice, I'd like coffee. So what would be the, the question to this, guys? What would you like to drink? Excellent. Muchas gracias, Carlos. Es correct. What would you like to drink? I'd like coffee. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to continue, guys. Now it's my turn to ask you. Please respond using wood. What would you like to eat? What would you like to have? Ice cream or chocolate cake? Okay, now, guys, we're going to answer to the questions. Okay, now is the opposite. Okay, so we have the question and we need to answer it. so the first example it says what would you like to eat what will be the answer using the expressions that we just discussed okay what will be the answer guys i like a hamburger excellent muy bien carlos muy bien very good another example guys anybody else who would like to participate carlos just gave us a really good example I'll, I'll have the fish. I'll have fried fish, for example. Very good. Thank you, Luis. I like the pasta. I like pasta. Thank you, Jenny. Yes. Very good. Okay. And then it says, uh, the next one, it says, what would you like to have? Ice cream 
or chocolate cake? I like ice mm -hmm. cream. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Jenny. Yes. I like, I like chocolate cake, please. Chocolate cake, please. Yes, excellent. Thank you so much, guys. That's perfect. I really, really thank you for your participation. And yes, I can see that you guys are really good. Really good. Thank you. Okay, so in este caso, guys, eh, solamente vamos a volver aquí atrás un poquito. Eh, para que vean nuevamente eh, las opciones de las respuestas, ¿verdad? Eh, se había, había olvidado mencionarles que también ustedes pueden decir No, thank you. That, that'll be all. Okay, that'll be all. No, gracias. Eso será todo. ¿Verdad? Cuando no queremos ordenar nada más. Eso sería en caso de que ya no queramos ordenar nada más de comida, ¿verdad? Entonces, esas son las posibilidades. I'd like, I'll have, Oh, no, thank you. That'll be all. No, thank you. That'll be all. Okay. Siempre pronunciando en, esa, en, ese, en este caso la L al final de la palabra. ¿Verdad? Okay. So, do you have any questions about these guys? So, no questions. No, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Francisco, please go I ahead. Have a question, teacher. Um, mm -hmm. It will. Siempre se utiliza para futuro, ¿verdad? Y en esta forma, ¿en qué, ¿en qué estaría puesto? Sería como un enlace, pero ¿de qué forma? Ahí va a disculpar y gracias. Sí, no, no hay problema. Ok, eh, por lo general, Francisco, cuando nosotros utilizamos will, es porque estamos haciendo una decisión, en, es para hablar del futuro, o es cuando hacemos una decisión justo en el momento, ¿verdad? Eh, en este caso estamos diciendo, yo voy a comer esto. Probablemente no es algo que hayamos planeado, sino que dentro de estas opciones que nos están dando, eh, pues decidimos comer esto, pero es algo espontáneo, ¿verdad? Entonces por eso decimos, I'll have. Y recuerde, okay, usted, okay. recuerde usted que para hablar de eh, cuando vamos a comer, eh, por, por lo general decimos, eh, por ejemplo, have lunch, have dinner, así, ¿verdad? Entonces, por eso se utiliza esta estructura así de I'll have or I'd like, ¿ok? Esa es la razón. Ok, thanks. You're welcome. Ok, guys, so, eh, any other questions, guys? Ok, so, if you don't have any other question, guys, eh, then we probably are going to finish here tomorrow. We're going to continue. We're going to complete this uh, knowledge check. We're also going to complete this uh, listening exercise. And tomorrow, uh, we're going to, uh, I will help you so we can complete the midterm exam, okay? That's something that you guys need to complete. Uh, so I think that probably a good idea, it will be to do it uh, tomorrow at night because uh, you need to have this completed by Friday. So I'm going to help you so we can cover all of that information so you can be ready for Friday. So most likely uh, we are going to do that, okay? So, okay guys, if you don't have, uh, sí, Francisco, dígame. Este viernes que tenemos que venir a estudiar también o era la otra semana, iba a disculpar, gracias. No, it's okay, it's okay, Francisco. Yes, this Friday we need to come. Yes, we need to, uh, basically we're not going to have class on Thursday. So because of that, we're going to have the class on Friday. That's the reason why. So, yes, this Friday. Teacher, parece que se pasa el examen y la completación de la plataforma para el viernes, porque el jueves es vacación. Correcto, sí. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, guys, so you, if you don't have any more questions, then uh, we will leave it here. And I will see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. So I hope you have a great evening, guys. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good night, 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 teac